This programme is brought to you by Hungry Jacks and Bunnings Warehouse. The Phoenix and the Sixers, two of the most exciting teams in the NBL, go head-to-head -head on a Sunday afternoon. How about that? This is going to be an absolute beauty. I like the Phoenix. They've been building. They've been getting healthier. They've been relying on Mitch Creek, but no longer. You've got Brock off, Joe Cheese back, Alan Williams and Gary Brown. They've got a deep squad, and we know the potency of the Adelaide 36ers. Now, same game multi. We're taking on Mitch Creek here. We're going under 21 and a half because Antonius Cleveland is the best defender in the NBL. Robert Franks needs to get on the glass and we're going to take this for a high scoring game. Enjoy the game. Gamble responsibly. You know the score. Stay in control. Gamble responsibly. South East Melbourne Phoenix look to defend home court against the Adelaide 36ers. Randall this time cuts through oh. and the jam. Oh. Have a slice of that. Oh. Creek wants to get himself involved. Mitch Creek. Brockoff. Fouled. Oh, my. It goes. Goodness me. Ball in the hands of Randall. Got it. Well, he's tied it. These two can't be separated. We need another five minutes. Into overtime, and they go down to the big man. Kel. Now it's going to be hard for Adelaide. He has been massive. Southeast Melbourne Phoenix. They win in overtime against the Adelaide 36ers. Welcome to John Kane Arena with the Southeast Melbourne Phoenix are set to do battle with the Adelaide 36ers. And as you just saw, round five when these two teams played Lenard Copeland, it was one of the most thrilling games that I've been in attendance for. An overtime thriller. Do we get the same feeling that we're headed to some extra basketball today? I don't know. No Randall. Randall had 28 points the last time these guys played. No Randall, but what they do have is camaraderie. These guys are playing a lot better together. They're filling each other out, and I think they'll play well tonight. Well, as you said, no Randall, but let's just have a quick look at the ladder because for the Adelaide 36ers, every game right now is essential because you look right there at the top, Sydney. Southeast Melbourne, they're pretty safe right now playing some good basketball, but it's on the bottom end of the ladder that we need to focus. Adelaide, it is danger zone. Although they lost on Friday to Perth, then you can tell that they're playing better. They look better as a team. They look better uh, as a group. And I think these guys actually like each other, so that's going to help you. They look very good. And another import waiting in the wings to come. But let's touch on Southeast Melbourne Phoenix right now because Alan Williams, you talk about nailing the import lottery. This man is a godsend for this Phoenix team. Leading the league in double doubles. And Lenard Copeland, have a look at some of those names. MVP Keanu Pender, MVP Xavier Cooks. Where's the love for our man, Alan Williams? Let me tell you something. Big Sauce will certainly be in. He'll be in there talking about his contract next year. Five double-doubles in the last five games. And when I spoke to him earlier, he said, that's what I do. I bring the double-doubles. Hey, they always say that's what they do, and that he won't get a double-double tonight, and we'll see what happens there. But he's a lucky man because he's playing with one of the most unselfish superstars in the league, in Mitch Creek, who he's a guy that I reckon could average 25 a game, but he chooses to pass the ball and share it around amongst these beasts. Easy. These guys play together in the G League, and they, they have that friendship. They look for each other, and when they play well together, the team generally wins. Well, let's have a look at the Adelaide 36ers as well because it has been addition by subtraction for this unit. As we said, Randall out, another import coming in very, very shortly. But Robert Franks has been the beneficiary of some of those minutes and been playing some very, very good basketball. I didn't realize he was that big. When I spoke to him earlier, he's tall, man. He's strong. He's one of those players that does it all. He plays well, he rebounds well, and he passes the ball. Well, speaking of someone who does it all, that man right there, Mitch McCarron, nine offensive rebounds last time out against the Wildcats because, you look, Daniel Johnson, Robert Frank, didn't quite bring it on that end. But what a luxury to have a guard that is able to rebound at that type of ability. That is exceptional. Nine offensive rebounds. And I think the last time they played there, he had nine rebounds in total. But that's what he does. He, he does all the little intangibles to get them over the top. Where do Adelaide need to go from here? Of course, another import coming in. But where this season hangs in the balance, they're going to need to start picking these wins up at succession, especially at home. But we know how important a road win will be today. they got to bring in the right import. They bring in a guy who, who actually fits the team, who's not selfish, get the ball into Daniel Johnson, get these imports firing, and I think they'll be okay. Well, I'll tell you what, Lenard Copeland, your prediction for the game before we throw upstairs? I'm picking 
Southeast Melbourne because he's at home. Well, it's time to go upstairs to Jack Heaver and Liam Santa Maria. And Bubblegum Daisy. Thank you very much, Copes. Great to have Copes and Don Johnson courtside for this afternoon's game as well. Andrew Gaze and Liam Santa Maria. Let's take a look at the starting five. Firstly, for the Southeast Melbourne Phoenix, Drewy. And one thing we know about this group, this five, when they get together, they put more points on the board as a unit than any other team in the competition. For sure. It's a very balanced starting five. In fact, I like the, the, uh, the Southeast Melbourne Phoenix roster. Gary Brown, in particular, the statistics says when he's not there, they're in all sorts of trouble. And if he's there and doesn't play well, then they're not going to do well. So he is very much the catalyst to how the Southeast Melbourne Phoenix have travelled so far this season. For the Adelaide 36ers, Liam Santamaria, the champion starting five for them. Well, they need to hit back after Friday. No question about that. Yeah, they do. They let that game slip against the Wildcats. Lost two in a row. Now, Mitch McCarron, he was sensational. Stuff in the stat sheet. Robert Franks and Daniel Johnson. We know what they can do offensively. How do they handle Creek and Big Sauce down low? Southeast Melbourne with the best home record in the Hungry Jacks NBL this season. Seven and two on their floor at John Kane Arena. The Adelaide 36 is not too shabby away from home themselves. They're four and three. It's the first of a Sunday doublehead of the Sydney Kings and Tasmania. Up next from Kudos Bank Arena, the first time we're going to see the grand finalists from last season go head to head. Johnson. His first three well short. There's Mitch McCarron. Nine offensive rebounds on Friday night. They just picked up one then as well. Sometimes the ball, you go through those patches where you can score, you can defend, and you also can. The ball just seems to find you on the glass, and that's certainly been Mitch McCarron on Friday night and started off well there despite the miss. Garrett Brown walks into a three. Full short. Rebound for Sunday Dench. 36ers, as we saw on the ladder, are in that middle bracket. We're playing for fifth and sixth spot this season. The competition is fierce, and we saw Melbourne win last night. We saw Adelaide go down to Perth on Friday. So the teams around the 36ers are all winning at the moment. Yeah, need to start getting a couple of wins in a row as Creek can't knock in that from the block. Adelaide, they felt a couple of weeks ago like they were just starting to build some momentum. A loss to Sydney, a loss to Perth, and now they need to bounce back, and that'll help from Sunday Detch as he gets them on the board. First points of the afternoon to the 36ers. He's been in and out of the starting lineup uh, a little bit this season, Sunday Detch, and now though coming in and getting the start, knocking down that first three really does a lot for your confidence as well. Williams pass almost chopped off, and Trey Cal steps out of bounds. Trey Kell for me is one that a lot of raps on him and his shooting ability and how important he's going to be. He is one that I think he's still got a, a lot more to give, particularly with his field goal shooting, only shooting at 37% from the field overall. 35 from three. Cleveland had the seal on Brown, but Brown did well to keep him in front. And now collects the rebound, has shooters everywhere, including Cal. That's off the front of the iron. 36 is with the only made field goal of the game so far. Franks tees off. It's good. Well, that'll feel good for Robert Franks and the 36 is knocking down a couple of triples early. They struggled from long range on Friday night. Six of 26 against the Wildcats. And they've knocked down two here in the early going. Good take by Brown. And Phoenix first points of the afternoon. It's a really good point with the Adelaide 36s. That's really been the missing component to their game this season is their ability to knock it down consistently from the three-point line and almost got their third. I'll tell you what, they're not shy. They've whacked up five of them already. They've had seven field goal attempts. They've already had five from the three-point line. It was tipped back by Brockoff. Enables Alan Williams, and as we highlighted pre-game, he's in some sort of form right now. He's got such great touch in those types of situations around the rim, and across his last seven games, Alan Williams, he's had six double-doubles, and he's averaging 20 points, 12 rebounds a night. Yeah, big numbers, five double-doubles in a row. Now Brown, two on three up ahead, so holds off for Kel to arrive. Phoenix in front.
he was quiet <laughs> the other night. Trey Cowell, here's the kick out from Gary Brown. Feet set. Not a lot of pressure able to line that one in and, and knock it in. He's been nursing a little bit of an ankle injury. Played just 13 minutes in that win over Illawarra. And that'll feel good to put the Phoenix in front. At halftime, we're going to learn a little bit more about the coach of the South East Melbourne Phoenix. Simon Mitchell, a man you know very well from a young age, age Andrew Gaze. Let's just have a little bit of a look at what's coming up at the break. Great pass, great finish. I think I'm the second longest serving coach in the NBL now in my fourth season. So, you know, there's a lot of turnover in this league. You know, and then that's just the reality of professional sports. You see the, the kids coming in behind, and I call them kids, but see the other coaches coming in behind. And I recognize some of the traits. I recognize some of the downfalls, some of the pitfalls, some of the joy as well. That's to come at half yes. time. The thing I remember about Simon Mitchell the most when he was back uh, trying to forge a playing career uh, with the Melbourne Tigers was that uh, the uh, most unbelievable Kiss fan loved the band Kiss, <laughs> and he used to rock with the Kiss uh, number plates on his uh, on his car. And uh, I can't remember the type of car. I remember it was a wasn't necessarily the most flashy thing, but <laughs> such was his passion. <laughs> such was his passion for the the band Kiss. That's serious but he had the kiss devotion. number plates. That is serious devotion wow. right there. You ever thought about rocking the number plates of your favourite band, Liam? Oh no, I don't think that would. I don't want to give them away, to be honest. Uh, the he's under a bit of pressure this season. Fair to say, he got the contract extension at the end of last season, but just the one-year deal. Stack lineup. Um, they they underwhelmed a little bit last season, not making the playoffs. Got the team humming right now. They've won four of their last five. Can they climb the mountain though? When all is said and done. I think you look pretty good with Nickelback number plates, by the way. Franks helps himself and should have finished off. Phoenix have scored the last seven. Creek in the mid-range off target. And McCarran gets from one end to the other. We saw on Friday night as he gets free throws to come, a more aggressive Mitch McCarran, more field goal attempts, yeah. was involved in everything. Well, I think the previous week uh, he had a setback. He broke his nose and then uh, against the Sydney Kings in that second of a double he really was non-existent non-factor but obviously extenuating circumstances and it's a fine line with Mitch because I think he's got to be out there he's the facilitator he's the point guard he, he I, sometimes I think he almost puts more emphasis on getting everyone else going rather than himself but we've seen that game uh, on Friday although they lost 20 points 13 boards six assists mm -hmm. They are very impressive numbers and demonstrates what he's capable of doing. He had nine offensive rebounds. First starting point guard since Steve Woodbury in 1999 to have nine O boards in a game. We're calling Steve Woodbury a point guard, are we? According to our official data, yes, we are. Oh. You can take it up with him. Super player. MVP in 99, mm -hmm. I think it was. Please. Anthony Drimmick in for his first minutes. And his return from a back injury on Friday night. He's another one that's been very, very aggressive in recent weeks. And he's at his best when he's playing that way. Putting heat on the rim and being active. There he gets his hands on it. Oh, dear. It dented his foot. I don't know whether you're allowed to review this. If they go to a jump ball. There's uh, Drimmick you're talking about being aggressive. He's been very active from the three-point line. What's this? Straight off Trey Kell's foot. You can ask. You can't tell him. You ask. You, tell him. you guys ask all the time. Every time when you guys ask. We can only ask in the last two minutes of the game. So you're telling me that you're perfect right now? We both haven't got a decision. We can't let you jump Here's the replay. Definitely Clearly. caught the back of Cal's foot. But as we heard the explanation, it's not going to matter. Because Adelaide oh. is a freebie. And Antonius <laughs> Cleveland says good afternoon. Well, there's a little extra something on that, wasn't little there? A little something. Stand up, uh, take my time, roundhouse windmill dunk. The basketball gods went and sorted That's that it. out, didn't they? Just came out of nowhere, that Cleveland dunk. Freak, aggressive. 
He's going to get another opportunity. Hands off to Williams, who scores from underneath. There's that combination. Uh, Copes and Felix were talking about pre-game. Always looking for each other inside. Uh, previously played together at Long Island in the G League and enjoying sharing that front court. The Trimmick lost the handle. Brock off. Cal spins inside, draws contact. Points a good one to Cal. That's where it becomes tougher, when he's not settling. The, you know, half a look at the three ball, but then decides to put some heat on the rim and attack the basket, where this season, South El Southeast Melbourne have been very aggressive mm -hmm. in getting to the, the rim. That's not talking to me, mate. That's just abusing me. <laughs> well, Trey Cal, we saw last time that they met the highlights pre-game. It went to overtime. Trey Cal had 24 in that game, Liam. 20 of those 24 came in the fourth quarter in overtime. Yeah, it came up big late. And a lot of it was out of post catches. Alan Williams was a menace that night, and they were running doubles at him in the post. So the Phoenix pounded it in down low. He drew the double, kicked it out, and Cal was ready to fight. It was round five at John Kane Arena. Phoenix lead by three. Adelaide just a little sloppy with the ball. Interesting looking at the matchups. Here, Hiram Harris has checked in for Daniel Johnson, so Robert Frank slides to the five spot. But Simon Mitchell goes with the cross match, he puts Alan Williams on Harris because he's not much of a three point threat. And Creek stays with Robert Franks. And the idea there keeping Alan Williams closer to the bucket. Ruben Tarangi checks in. Let's get courtside to Copes. We'll get back to Cope shortly. Harris spins and wants to get to that left hand. Williams knew the scout, made sure that he couldn't. One thing Harris can do is he can put it to the floor and perhaps more those elbow catches and give him a little bit more space to attack the basket. Almost had it there as well, just the sliding of the pivot foot gets called for the travel. Adelaide scored the first six points of the game. Phoenix have started to find their groove, and they've been led by that man. Trey, Trey Cowell has eight of their 16. He's feeling it. In early doors here, Trey Cowell just getting himself into a groove. He's been alternating good games with quiet games. Trey Cowell, over his past eight or nine, most of the season really. Double digit scoring and then a single digit game. He's up and about today. Thanks, no good. That pass from Williams, a little ambitious for Creek. Franks knew what was coming. Sunday Ditch with room. He's had a couple of attempts, no good. A creep. Only Franks ahead of him. Happy to try his chances and score. That's tough. Creek gets downhill. There's not too many people that can keep him in front. And then if you do have a bigger body, you can just rise up above and can get to the free throw line as well. His first bucket of the afternoon, Mitch Creek. 0-3 prior to that. Edge from a similar spot. Let's go again. That time Cleveland puts it back in. He's been a spark for them. Brown unsuccessful. A little bit happening just slightly off the ball with Ruben Tarangi. And Cleveland. Foul on the Phoenix, their third of this first quarter. Also changes yeah, to the lineup. Both teams, uh, Kyle Adnam checking in. Gary Brown, a bit of a quiet start for him. He was terrific the other night. 12 points, 10 assists. A double double for the Puerto Rican point guard. But 0 of 3 from long range to begin this one. Hasn't quite found his groove. Kyle Adnam in for his first minutes Five. of the afternoon, as is Kai Soto for the Adelaide 36ers. We oh, saw him for eight oh, let's minutes go, let's go, let's go. on Friday night. Yes. That pass not finding the target. Tough pass. You've got the big fella, 7-2, rolling to the rim. Perhaps a little overhead pass, go over the top of the defence rather than trying that little bounce pass to the big fella. Williams told to go to work on Soto, muscled his way in. 
we saw this on Friday's game when Soto's on there. They're just going at him. They're trying to isolate him and see what he can do to keep people in front. It's that little bounce pass that I'm talking about. Good coverage there by Williams was in enough to still be able to put some pressure on that pass. And there's the isolation. Strong hit straight into the chest of Soto and makes that little bit of separation. It's oh, an interesting look. Not sure how you got front row seats, but how do you see the game through that? <laughs> really trying to stay incognito. Yeah, that could be anyone under there. That could be Coates for all we know. <laughs> you know these are the minutes where, where things can get a little dicey for Adelaide defensively. Daniel Johnson and Kai Soto sharing the floor together. But at the offensive end, I'd like to see Daniel Johnson in the block here. He's got Ruben Tarangi as his direct matchup. Samatech lost the handle. There's one of the best competitions in sport right now. Hey, you can meet Shaquille O'Neal. It's an hour, flight to calm, everything looked after. And thanks to Reebok. Cal with eight. Good floater. Well short. And Drimic up the floor quickly. Commits the foul. And one of the big challenges that the Phoenix have got is how they reintroduced uh, Joe Chi back into the, the lineup. and. He's missed a lot of basketball. Came into the start of the season not in great shape. Got hurt with a calf injury. And has spent a lot of time on the sidelines. And during that time, they've played some really good basketball. Dane Pino coming in and playing that real uh, defensive role and providing a spark on the defensive end for him. Johnson with the offensive rebound. The presence of Chi was... Just enough then to change the shot. That's what he can do. He's a good rim protector. Tarangi. All sorts of wide open. Oh, Brock off. Hustles and comes up with it. Final minute of the opening quarter. Chi had the seal and the jam. Well, Soto there just tries to full front. And if you're going to do that, you need two things. You need extreme ball pressure to make that pass a lot tougher. And you certainly need someone on the weak side hedging a little to uh, be a deterrent. Nine point lead right now for the Phoenix. It's a game high lead for them. It's been a good defensive effort. Five of 17. Now, the Adelaide 36 have been blazing away. Worked a lot from the three point line where they're only two of nine. But five of 17, 29% so far for the Adelaide 36ers. That combined with four turnovers is a big reason right now and they trail it by nine. Okay, so I'll tell my guys Since scores were level at seven apiece, it's been a 15-6 run from the Phoenix Liam and as Gazy said, it's all started at the defensive end of the floor. Yeah, the, the, the pressure's been pretty good. The, they've been executing the skate. They've dodged a couple of bullets. Wide open looks from Daniel Johnson from long range and a couple of other guys getting some pretty good looks, but they've been making them pay down the other end, running it, pushing the ball, getting on the rim. And the quick release three, a little two for one offering. That'll be good for his confidence. Now the lead is 10. Adelaide have had some issues with the way they're starting games this season. It's a problem for them again today. Shot clock at seven. Ditch into the lane. That's got to count, I would think. Fouled in the shot. Looked like it hit the backboard. Getting the ball before the Okay. Black four. Push. Two shots. Oh. Let's have a look at the replay. Got away with a little hold earlier on. And then at the end, well, maybe not. Hard to tell from that angle. This one here might give us... No, that's a goal. Trust you got through it. I thought it was the first time I saw it. I just <laughs> lacked a little confidence, but... Hang on. Hey, Mick. We don't, we're not watching the screen. That's reviewable, though, isn't it? Travis says he has him blocking the ball before. It's hit the backboard first. Okay. 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 We count points. Points count. One shot. Well, I assume someone in the uh, the hub 
got the message to the officials because it seemed like originally they were ruling that it was a clean block. They might have heard you through the wall here. Perhaps. I'm here to provide that sort of advice. <laughs> and your voice is that loud that it's very possible. <laughs> it's common sense. Everyone working together. Well, that's right. We've got the right outcome in the end. Tetch with the extra. 7.3 seconds for the Phoenix. Adnam, deep three. That's missing. Brockoff doesn't get it to go. Quinn does. I don't think he got it off before the... I think he did. He did, did I, he? I reckon he did. Stuck with the play, Mitch Creek. I think this should be reviewable as well. Let's just hold off here. Oh, yes. Oh, clearly got it off. <laughs> Don't stick with your gut, Drewy. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Basket counts. 27-18 at quarter time. You're watching Sunday Hoops in the Hungry Jacks NBL. Kai Soto, 0 point, 0 rebound, 0 assist, puro 0 lahat. Wala nga ang play eh. eh matagal na yan, matagal na istorya na yan. Hindi naman yan bago, dati na istorya yan. Lagi naman na uh, hindi pinapasahan. Mapasahan man. Swerte ang swerte. Kailangan gumawa siya ng paraan. Para maka-score. Boss, mag-live ka rin ng laban ni Pacman. Wala po ako makuha na dito sa ano. Pay-per-view po yun eh. Ata, di ba? Pay-per-view? O YouTube din sila. Ano oras ba yung laman ni Pacquiao? Mga ano? Gabi pa siguro yun. No? Ano oras na ba sa Korea? Ano ba? Nilabas na ba si Kai Soto? Hey, feedback. Ayan. Pasensya nyo na. Excuse me, Franks. Kapag nag-feedback pa, tatanggalin ko na audio YouTube daw YouTube po, meron Parang undercard lang po po yung mga ano, YouTube in the league in three point rate, the Phoenix, um, and first in the league in free throw attempts. So they put a lot of heat on the rim. Not a team that generally blazes away. So eight three point attempts in that first quarter was a little high. And he's trying to just get his group moving the ball a little, put some heat on the rim. 
Marshall out there to start the second quarter for Adelaide as Cal blocks the shot. In the offensive foul. This, this first couple of minutes of this second quarter is very, very important for the 36ers. Oh my word it is, and uh, attack on the rim, and I think that Adelaide would have had a conversation about trying to get to the rim, because you talk about the Phoenix not being all that uh, aggressive from the three-point line on the season. No, I thought I'd not been all that aggressive. In the first quarter, they whacked up nine of them, and only two of them, two from nine. <coughs> Clearly made a couple of adjustments and went inside the first. Well, 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 Something tells me that the Phoenix might have been watching the Perth game because Drew, we had that game. Yeah, we're going to go. 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 The shot blocker in Joe Chick. That's his, that's his favourite move, Marshall. A little bit of penetration, spins back, fades away. Creek franks up in the air and forces the third foul of the quarter. He just not going to get a submit long. Deeper look at the Sahan. Marshall hit. Look at this. Tapos na kalagay sa website nila, maglalaro daw ngayon na uh, issued uh, pick up sa minutes kasi nakabalik na si Sochi. So he's very aggressive, creating a bit of space for himself against a very strong athletic defender. This is now four fouls, this is a big problem for Adelaide. Long way to go in this quarter against the team in the league. Kakanat, magkakanat. Kakanat. Who is best at getting to the free throw line? And that's a three fouls. Na si Diego, with eight and a half minutes. Oh, man. Clipping the eye, just shaking it off. Still a warrior on Thursday night. Plus 30 in his time on the floor. 21 and 7. He's in a really nice patch of form right now, as are the Phoenix, and as is this man, Gary Brown with a bomb. It's a 15-point game. Ayan na, tanggalin na yan si CJ, na magkatapusan na. Headline ng bukas. Pagyan ito ng baka ng mga tatlong po, patay sila. Ayan na. Another turnover, Phoenix off to the races. Brown assessing options. Creek for three. Only man, lapan sa apat. Kaya kaya din nakaw ang pasa. Just kung po, buti ka pa hindi masalo. Na naipon sila sa kanan na to. Buti pumasok. That's good, and that is needed. be one of those guys who bails you out of those types of positions, Robert Franks. Top 10 in the league in points and rebounds, but really at the, the back end of those rankings. And um, they need him putting points on the board. Marshall behind the back. Nice look for Franks. Couldn't repeat the dive. Well, I'm dribbling, dribbling. some good minutes. Simon Mitchell has seen enough. They've scored off their last couple of possessions, Adelaide, and he wants to have a chat about things. Thirty-five twenty-five. Six fifty-five remaining. <coughs> Reminder still to come this afternoon, it'll be the Sydney Kings and Tasmania in the grand Ooh. final rematch. Ooh. First time this season I think they've got together and had a game, so looking forward to that one. 
Both teams in pretty good form too. They certainly are. Okay, look, guys. We finished. Thank you, guys. Welcome back to Derby. He's got a very special guest alongside him. Thank you, Jack. I certainly appreciate it. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
Ah, pagpasok ng 4 minutes, baka ipasok na si Kai. Nang 5 minutes. Lagi naman ganyan, pag matatapos ang kwada quarter ay eh, papasok. Patay sa kwaknet Pasok ang tira ng number 3 Nakita nyo naman yung opensa nila oh. <clears throat> Ayun na, tumira ng 3 Patay Labas na yan si DJ Nakakalat Pagod na pagod na Last game yata, halos babad si Macaron eh. Tsaka itong si, uh, si Roberts. Sobrang babad. Si Robert Franks. Sablay <clears throat> Hindi si Kai Soto yung nag-aabang Si ano yun eh, si Galloway yung nag-aabang eh Usually gantong minuto po Pasok si Kai pero si Galloway yung nag-aabang doon O pwede lang lumipat eh, di nakalipat na sa ibang team yan <coughs> Ayun na sa loob, binabanatan Baka ipasok pag binalik si Sochi ng uh, China Shoutout Felix Life TV, shoutout sa iyo Nabangan ko talaga ang pambato natin Wala ko si pambato na sa upuan pa At 2 minutes lang pinaglaro Kaya talaga pag may kontra Kailangan finish kontra Hindi pa pwedeng ano Basta basta umalis Kailangan magwala siya katulad ng ginawa ni Randall Maging pasaway siya para tanggalin Patay na naman Taas kamay eh Simpleng simple tataas mong kamay mo Para sa depensa Ito na si ano Si Ditch na naman Titira yan Titira yan Narinig ako Hindi tumira Ayan Turnover Makaka-jumbo niya si Sochi. Patay ka. Apalamang ko mananalo na naman ng ating uh, kalaban ito. Amoy na amoy na oh. <coughs> Swerting swerte lang yung pagkapanalo na sa current stipend eh. Kung sila'y natalo sa current, uh, sa current stipend, sigurado tanggal na yan. Kasi tatlong sunod silang matatalo eh. Tignan mo. Did 
<clears throat> Matatapos na ang first half po. Nakakaloko na naman ang nyetang Ada. Ayan na, luwag-luwag oh. Sausaw eh. Sausaw ng sausaw. Tapos titira. Matatapos na ang first half. Wala pa si Kai. Kaya so ito po, hindi pa, uh, pinasok lang ng saglit, mga 2 minutes may get lang, hindi pa ako nakakabalik. Ito na, sa coaching na talaga problema nito. Wala sa players. Nasa coaching na talaga. I mean, hindi naman obvious, no? Hindi naman obvious yan. Ewan ko paano pa hinihintay ng uh, memiari ng uh, Adelaide kung bakit hindi pa pinipitek itong si CJ Broton. Wala akong pusta, hindi po tayo pumupusta. <laughs> Kung mayroong pustahan dito, eh, pupusta tayo sa kalaban. Eh, mukhang panalo na. Oh. <laughs> Namamayag pag po si Sochi sa laban na ito. Ay ba, hindi makakalabas ng Pilipinas yan. Hindi makakalabas yan si CJ kapag nasa atin yan. Sigurado. Happy viewing kay Joel Bello Vlogs. Shout out Idol. Thank you so much. Happy viewing po sila lahat. Salamat po. Patay. Kitang kita mo kung papasok ko hindi eh. Tapos sila lang natin to season na to at hiwalayan na natin ang ano NBL. Kaya lang naman tayo nanonood dito gawa ni Kai Soto. Kanina pa ho sila tambak. Mukhang hindi na makakabalik yan. Shoutout kay Lamkes. Pa-shoutout po kay Trisha Del Rosario. Happy viewing. Salamat po. Like 
is aggressive on the front foot. Feels like he can overpower Ryan Brockoff. <clears throat> draws the whistle. Cleveland, a 71% free throw shooter. And it just cap off a wonderful first half for the Phoenix fans. They can have a burger, but not just yet. A little bit more cheering to be done. Parang kanina pa, hindi pa natatapos tong first up, oh. <coughs> hindi siya kasi patas, eh. Kapag nakakamali itong si, ano, si DJ Johnson, hindi naman masyado tinatanggal. Sino ba kasi nakaisip na ipasok dyan si Kai Soto? Ito si Joel Bell ang nakaisip nyan eh. At saka itong uh, East West and Private. East West Private ang nagkapasok dyan kay Kai. Alala ko sinabi niya noon na ano eh, na kapag hindi maganda yung ginagawa ilalabas mo eh yung mga ka-teammate niya eto pinasok pa si Kayo Nasa body language talaga ni Kayo na bad trip eh no Pang asar eh pinasok pa oh para lalong magkamali <coughs> Tuwan-tuwa yung announcer eh, tambak naman. <coughs> oh, Ganun pa rin, tambak pa rin, wala rin pa rin, wala pa rin ano. Shoutout po, Erwin Bulante ng Isabela. Shoutout kay Jock Bulante. Kay Erwin Bulante. Thank you, happy viewing po sa inyo. Simon Mitchell, the coach of the Southeast Melbourne Phoenix. Let's learn a little bit more about the man who's led them 
since day one. 72 points for the Phoenix is their third lowest score in franchise history. Now we see the Phoenix are compromised offensively. They work today. Pulang pulang na naman ang mga hasang ng nitong mga lovers, no? Tawagin natin mga lovers ni Kai Soto. Pulang pulang mga hasang. Andiyan na yan sa mga kapibahay ng Mama Rites na at kinakwento na mga nangyayari. Happy viewing. Thank you guys. <clears throat> Half time muna. Ah, Mag-isip-isip sila. Mukhang wala itong uh, pag-asa itong ating pambato mapapasok ngayon. Wala pa siyang 3 minutes yata. No? Talagang bastusa na talaga ang nangyayari. Mukhang uh, Mas mabuti pa kung matalo. Mas mabuti pa kung matalo. Mabuti pa sana maging kulilat sila eh. Para talagang uh, magkaroon ng kalalagyan itong si Broton. <clears throat> Malaki ang offer ng SMB team kay Kai Soto. Magkano ho offer nila? Dapat dyan eh, ano eh, patulpo na yan eh. <laughs> Pwede ba i-reklamo kay tulpo yan? Mabuti pa sa FIBA eh. Maraming ginagawa ang FIBA para kay Kai Soto, mga kapuntos. No? Pag-usapan natin yung FIBA, alam nyo, mahal na mahal ng FIBA Asia si Kai Soto. At talagang malaki ang problema, ang magiging problema ng uh, Asia pagdating po kay Kai Soto dahil napakabata pa ho niya at marami siyang bibigang problema dyan sa Asia. So, Kaya ang FIBA inaalagaan to si Kai Soto kahit pa paano may mga ginagawa para sa kanya. Kahit naman maganda yung laro ni Kai Soto, nilalabas pa rin ni, ano, ni CJ Broto. Tulad ng last game niya, napakaganda ng ginagawa. Hindi natin nakita ni no, sa fourth quarter.
Shoutout kay Mark Arellioso. Shoutout sa iyo. Shoutout kay J. Koy TV. Shoutout, shoutout boss Kalinan Dabaw City. Thanks sa live boss. Shoutout kay Ronnie Mateo Mata. Shoutout. Salamat po. Will Koy Lokot Vlog. Shoutout bro. Thank you. Uh, wala po akong info sa laban ni Pacquiao. Kung uh, may tropa dyan makasagot, uh, pakisagot po. Thank you po. Ronnie Mateo Mata, na shoutout na. Salamat po, shoutout ulit. Request na naman ni Asifak, shoutout ulit kay Manoy Adam. Pau Israel, salamat, more power. Thank you, happy viewing. Takal Sports TV, salamat po sa pagbalik. Royland Quicho, pa-shoutout po kay Mr. Tiegas. Guys, tigilan nyo na yung mga ganyan, yung mga ano, mga double meaning. <laughs> Muti ka na naman ako madali. Tanong ni Lebron 23006 Sa tingin mo hindi kaya hindi kaya ni Kai sa NBL? Kayang kaya po. Bakit din po hindi po kaya? Eh hindi nga po siya na-develop ng ayos nga lang. Ilang ang problema. Nakita niya naman yung laro niya last year nung naging healthy siya. No? Maganda yung pinakita niya. Lalo na nung end ng season. Kakayanin niya. Ano lang talaga. Hindi siya nalaga na ayos. Hindi naman obvious na kita naman lahat ng ta ng mga fans niya no mga nanonood. Okay, daya niya nga mas mataas pa siguro ang ang competition sa FIBA eh kaysa sa NBA la tutusin. Para sa akin ha. Kasi ang uh, FIBA talaga ano eh. May mga ex-NBA player talaga naglalaro din eh. Hintay na lang tayo next year. Ah, itong year na to, sigurado mag, baka maglaro siya sa Summer League. Hindi naman siguro pab pababayaan ng Wasserman yan eh. Felix Life TV shout out. Ba, no, kita naman sa laro ni Kayo Phoenix Suns. Ayun. Chad Leo Borneo shout out po dito sa Hinlang Leite Bo Leite Boss. Hindang Leite shout out diyan Chad Leo Borneo. Shout out din kay <coughs> Arialdo Molina from Riyadh KSA. Maraming salamat. Happy viewing po diyan. Salamat po. Hindi ko po alam kung anong oras ang laban ni Pacquiao eh. Palagay nyo, may kalaman pang racism sa ano. Mm, mahirap po nga yan eh. Patunayan, no? Kasi ang kalimitan naman ang victim ng racism, mga itim eh. Diba? Kalimitan, no? Lalo na dito sa US. Ay, totoo naman yan, nangyayari yan. Pero I, I don't think na ano. Siguro talagang Uh, wala lang kumpiyansa si CJ Broton dito kay Kai Soto kaya ganyan na nangyayari hindi kasi natin alam kung ano nangyayari sa sa locker room sa mga practice nila kung ano talaga yung nakikita nila up close so kung meron man silang Thailand alam na nila yon
small ball band Thailand but ayaw siyang gamitin. Yan yung plano ni Kai Sotonong. Gusto nila mabilis. Up and down ng laro. Kaso nawala na nga to si Randall. Dapat nagbago na sila. Kasi dapat medyo balance eh. Kasi kailangan nila ng depensa. Kagaya na sinabi ko dati, dapat i-develop si Kai Soto para sa depensa. Yun na lang ang i-focus niya ngayon para pag siya nag-market sa kanyang pagpasok sa NBA, pwede niya yung magamit as a defensive player, no? Pang contra dito kala Wemba Nyama, yung mga bagong players ngayon kala sila Bol Bol. Actually, si Bol Bol magaling eh. Si Bol Bol, sama mo na itong maglalaro next year, itong si, si naman yung payat. Si Chet Holmgren. Yan po. Salamat sa live kapunto. Salamat na hindi kami magtiti sa Facebook live na may ingay at madaming humihingi ng Gcash. May lang hihingi ng Gcash? <laughs> Ganun ba? I enjoy lang kayo dyan guys. At malapit na siguro magsimula ito. Mga 20 minutes na naman o ilang minuto ba? Mga isang oras na namang Sakit ng ulo, mapapanood natin dito. Shoutout kay Jeffrey Barcenas na ang Pembo, Makati City. Maraming salamat sa pag-live. Galing kay Edilyn Bello. Salamat po, happy viewing. Eto na! Eto na! Eto na! Laki ng lamang, 15. Kinulang. Nakagaw na. Ito na, binababa na ng ano, Phoenix. Ito magaling sa 3, yung 55 na yan eh. Kanina pa bumaba na dyan eh. Shoutout sa mga taga Malinigan, Cagayan Valley. Salamat sa stream. God bless po. Yan po galing kay John Warren Barrett. Salamat. Happy viewing. Salamat po. Shoutout din kay Clark Rivas ng Lano del Sur. From WOW. Just wasn't 
Happy viewing, Lady Ocampo, watching from Manila. Thank you, Paul. Wala, wala ang rebound. Patay na naman. Imposible pong mahahabaan ng minuto na naman si Kai dito. malapad ang katawan eh paano mahahasa sa banggaan si Kai Soto kung nakaupo coach ano ba coach Ang maganda nga yan, matalo sila na wala si Kai Soto ng ano eh, nilaglalaro eh. Dahil dadamay pa nila yung bata. <laughs> Ayan na! Coast to coast, nadale ni Robert Franks. Tinatamad ang team, ang Adelaide. Patay tayo Nakabalik ba ako? Wala pa ho si Kai 